Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I am going to be painting a Moon Knight bust. So this model was from Wicked, and I'll put a link to their Patreon and their store down in the description. It is a beautiful model, and there is so much detail. Now the model turned out beautiful, but with one exception. I was still testing my retraction speeds on my new E10 8K resin printer, and I got some really bad layer lines. But it's for my son, and he said he does not care, so I didn't even attempt to buff them out because it was going to be a ton of work. So there are some lines in the cape, but other than that, the model is beautiful, and that has nothing to do with the Wicked model whatsoever. It's all on me. But I didn't reprint it because it was going to use so much resin. So let's go ahead and get to the painting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use this real brown from Folk Art, and I'm going to just throw it in my airbrush and get the base coat for all of the brown rock. The next thing is I'm using this pre-mixed black from Folk Art that I just have thinned down in a bottle. And I am doing a black coat on the sign of Moon Knight and also going over the moon as well. And then I'm taking that same black and going over anything that's going to be gold. So I'm going over the cuffs, then I go over the brass spiky knuckles, and the moon on his chest, and also I am going to do his belt. Then I'm taking a medium gray and I'm coating the entire thing. So that is the suit and also the cape. Now I have everything airbrushed that I want to airbrush. I have all of this in this medium gray. Everything that's going to be gold, I went ahead and airbrushed it black. Even, you see the arm, that's gonna be gold. The spike knuckles are going to be gold. But before I even do any of that, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to give this entire thing an ink wash. Now, I'm going to anywhere that there is a suit and fabric ink wash it. I'm not going to do the hood and I'm not going to do this part because I don't want as much definition in that. The ink wash is really just going to fill in all of those cracks and give a really dark definition to it. And I'm going to be using my own DIY ink wash. If you are curious of how to do this, I actually already made a video of exactly how I make my ink wash and I'll go ahead and put a link right up here for you. So now I'm going to kind of clear this space and get ready to apply this ink wash. So the other thing I have is this plastic wrap and I'm gonna go ahead and just lay a sheet down over top of my silicone mat because I've realized over time the ink wash starts to stain my mat and I like my bright green mat. So this is just a barrier of protection. So I'm going to take an old brush and I poured my ink wash into a glass dish and I'm going to go ahead and dip this in and all I'm going to do is just give it a good coat. And the big thing when I'm applying an ink wash, I just want to make sure that there's no pooling anywhere or anything like that. And I just kind of empty my brush, kind of wipe it off and then kind of use it to soak up any big pools of ink wash. 
So there you go, you can see that definition now. And we're just gonna let this dry. Now I am going to go over the face just one more time because I want to get as much definition as I can in this thing because there's so much detail in this and I want to make sure it gets in all the cracks. And sometimes when I want more definition, I will go over something more than once because that'll just make it darker and darker because this is almost dried and that's why I'm doing it again but I'm still making sure that there's no pooling of wash in any specific area. I don't want to see any of those like spots. And there we go. So you can see that nice detail we got. So I gave a lot of time for this model to completely dry with the wash and now I'm going through and I'm masking off everything that I painted black on the belt, on the chest, and around his hand with the cuffs and the cuff itself because this is going to be all gold. Now I have everything masked off that's going to be gold and I'm going to be using this gold leaf rub and buff for the belt, the moon on the chest, the spiked knuckles and also this like wrist guard. And I'm going to go ahead and use my sponsor with this. If you don't know how to use rub and buff, I went ahead and did a full tutorial on just rub and buff and I show you exactly how to use it. And I'll go ahead and put the link up here for you. All right, so now I'm just going to use this and get started. So I got these done, now I just gotta remove the tape, and now I'm going to start on the actual material of the suit. So I noticed that there was a little tip that I missed, so I'm actually going to get a precision Q-tip and just kinda touch this with the rub and buff, and go in there and almost paint it. I'm going to kinda rub it as good as I can, while keeping that accuracy. And there we go. Okay. So now we've got that nice gold right there. All right, now the next thing is, is I'm going to be using this steel gray and go ahead and put it on my texture board. And I'm taking one of my makeup brushes and using it as a dry brush. And now I'm just going to start dry brushing this whole area while avoiding the gold. And the other thing I'm going to do is, since this is starting to dry, I'm just going to dab this and get some of the bristles wet, and that'll just help get the paint to flow a little better off the brush. Okay, so there it is right there. This is just our first layer of dry brush because we're going to start building it up and making it whiter and whiter. So that's done. Now let's move on to this part. Yeah, 
And if you see in comparison how much of a difference we're making. And so this is a lot darker now. We're basically just bringing up the tones little by little. So now we have our steel gray all dry brushed and we have lightened this up quite a bit. And we still have a lot more to go because we don't want him this gritty looking. We do want to have him light, lighter. So now we're going to move on to our next color. All right, so next I'm going to use this Dove Gray. And I'm going to go ahead and apply another dry brush all over where the white is. But this time, anywhere there's some darker areas, I'm going to not hit them as hard. So it's really the lighter areas. And you can see here in the comparison of how much lighter we're starting to get. So we're really starting to bring it up little by little. Now the one thing I am doing, if you noticed, I put this together because I'm looking to see at the connection points if one is a little brighter than another and I've got the tones just right because I don't want to have like an edge line essentially of like color because the seams might fit together but if the color is really bright on this one and then really dark on the body then I haven't been able to blend it good enough. So that's really what I'm checking. Now for the final coat and it's just gonna be straight white. And I'm going to be going with another dry brush that isn't as focused as the last one. All right, so now I am going to go ahead and mask this costume off because I am going to get started on the cape. And what I'm doing for the cape is I am just using an acrylic white ink and I'm highlighting all of the edges of the cape because I'm going to leave it that gray as the base but then just having those edge highlights with a nice white. All right, so just taking off the masking tape now. Looking like we got a moon night here. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on some of the gold inlays that I want to do. So I want to like do some edging and things like that. And that is going to be mostly on the body. I'm going to go ahead and use this brushed antique gold.
All right, so I went ahead and painted his eyes white in the moon logo, and also I just wanted to get a fit for this and see what it was gonna look like. So the next thing is I'm gonna do a little bit of an effect on his eyes because you know how they glow? Now, I went and picked this up and this is just the Folk Art Glow in the Dark set. And it has all of these colors that glow in the dark. But what I specifically bought this whole thing for is this neutral color. Because it is really just a white that glows. Um, so I am really looking forward to this one. And there's actually two bottles in there. I didn't know it. I didn't know what the other one was. So, this should be really fun because it's just basically, here I'll show you, it's just a clear kind of paint that glows in the dark. So, what I'm going to do is, now that I've already painted his eyes white, I'm going to go ahead and cover it with this. So, I'm going to go ahead and pour a little in my tray, and I'm going to get a fine point brush. So now I'm just going to get a little bit on my brush and start painting. So to see the effect, I turn off the lights and you can kind of see the eyes glow a little bit. It was just really hard to get the camera to focus. That was the last that I wanted to do to Moon Knight. And he is done, so what I'm going to do now is glue him together. All right, so now, the last part, the head. Okay, so there we go. He is done. Now it's time to jump to the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and set him aside. And the one thing is I am not putting this on, the last piece of his cape. So this goes on like this, and I do not wanna put that on because it kind of incorporates with the base. So I'll be putting this on one of the last things just to make sure it fits well. Putting this on the base while this cape piece is on, it can be a little difficult. So just to make it easier on me, we're leaving it like that. Okay, so now I am moving on to the base. And what I'm going to use first is this honeycomb. So I'm going to have it more of a sandstone look to it. And I've got it base coated in this brown. And now I am going to do a dry brush coat and a pretty heavy one with this honeycomb. And I'm gonna be using a bigger brush. So I'm just gonna go ahead, put it on my texture board and start in on this. And I want it to be heavier than I typically do. Once I got the honeycomb, I switched to a khaki paint and did the same thing and went back over everything just as a heavier dry brush. All right, so now I'm going to use this parchment. And I'm mixing it in with this other tan khaki just to kind of give me a lighter paint color. And I'm really just focusing on the high edges of this. So there we go. That is kind of the color I was going for. And here, let's even throw it on there. So you can see it kind of matches it there. Now we are going to focus on the stones and all of the other things on this base. Okay, so now that I have this sandy kind of texture, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is mask all of this off because I am going to take this in the spray booth and paint all of this base of a black. And then these chains are gonna be painting more of a silver. So here we go with the masking and all I'm gonna be using is this Tamiya masking tape. 
And an extra tip is once you have things edged off, so you don't have to mask everything you have, you can just use plastic wrap and cover it, and then just tape the plastic wrap around the model edge. Okay, so there we go. You can see it's got a nice edging on it, and now I can just paint the rest of this all black. I could do this with a brush, but it's going to be a lot faster, and I'm going to get a cleaner coat with the airbrush. So let's jump to the spray booth. And once everything's nice and dry, that is the time to take off your tape because you can get smears or any, anything, just the wet paint can actually mess up your edge. So always make sure that your paint's nice and dry before you take the tape off. Okay, so now I'm going to paint this stone and I'm gonna make this look like stone, not sandstone, just to make it kind of pop off. And I'm going to be using this medium gray from Folk Art. And all I'm going to be doing is dry brushing this. All right, now I'm going to add this pale gray. There we go. I'm only adding it to the top edge too. I'm using it as more of a highlight. Okay, so now I'm going to use this rub and buff on just the face of this. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the edge of this spouncer. Now I'm just going to rub it along the top surface. Now I am using a spouncer here, but if you have something that you want to get some really good details with, you can definitely use a brush. Just make sure it's an old brush that you don't mind throwing away afterwards. So that looks really nice. So now I'm actually going to get these brass knuckles with this as well. All right, so now with these moons, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a very old destroyed brush and start to paint on this silver leaf rub and buff on the moons themselves. So now we have the face sign, I guess, all done. And while I have this out, I'm already going to be doing the same thing to this to kind of make all of the moon silver. So I've got this spouncer and I've kind of been working on just little sides of it. And I've already got this side that's got silver on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just try not to mix it because I just don't wanna waste another spouncer. And there we go. I just love rub and buff. Excellent. So now we got the moon and we've got the logo all done. So now I've got this and more I'm looking at it, I kind of want to do these change in some rub and buff too, just because I love rub and buff and it always looks amazing. So I'm just going to take the same thing I've got and just lightly rub over top of it. And you can see with just a little amount of effort, it looks awesome. And I almost think since this, this kind of looks metal too around the edge. So you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to do the whole thing. Just in a very light metal look. And I'm glad I did it. It looks awesome. Okay. 
All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is take this raw sienna and I am going to just completely do a coat over all of the tablets. Now I'm going to take this coffee brown and get this wood plank right here. Okay, so now the wood and the tablets are all dry now. So all I'm going to do now is start doing some dry brush on them. And all I'm going to do for this one is use... So I'm going to use this khaki to do the dry brush over top of these tablets. I'm hoping it gives me a good sandstone looking texture that's a little lighter and stands out versus the actual base. Because I like how it's like a sandy stone base and I'm hoping that this will just stand out. That's why I went with this color because it's a little more orange. All right, so I'm gonna try this nutmeg on the actual wood itself. So now we are ready to start gluing this together because we are nearly done. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel and start assembling this. Okay, so I got him all glued together and he's looking fantastic. But just like I do for every single thing I do, I gotta do something extra to this. And the base here, it's just kind of bare. I know I painted it, but I still want something a little extra to it. Now, I do have some of this, it's essentially like little tiny vines. Um, and where to get it, I honestly have no idea. My buddy gave me some, and uh, I thought it would be awesome to be on here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually glue some of this in place and wrap it around some of the base to really just give it some more character. So I'm gonna just take some of these strings like this and start wrapping it in different places. And just to secure it, I'm going to go ahead and just put a few beads of super glue to make sure it just doesn't blow away on me. And there we go. We are ready for the final reveal. So I am so happy with how this model turned out. There was so much detail and so many areas to just play around and see what I could do with them. Even though almost all of it is white on Moon Knight, I was able to build up multiple layers and really get some good definition. And the gold inlays, I think, just really make it pop. And when I showed my son, he was over the moon, pun totally intended. So adding some of those vines on the base just made this model like to the next level. I absolutely love how all of those little details that you can add to a base can just make your models look so much more professional. If you like what you've seen today, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. And please leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think. Thanks for watching and I wish you a great day and I will see you in the next video.